Hi, I'm Mr. Baker, and this is what you're going to learn in Unit 12, Viruses and Bacteria. Our first unit is going to be about viruses, and we expect you to be able to identify structures and characteristics of viruses, including the capsid, the genome, and, the, and an envelope, explain how they reproduce, the differences between lytic and lysogenic cycles, identify what retroviruses are, and the important molecule they contain called RT, which is reverse transcriptase. Moving on. Viruses are smaller than bacteria. Many people consider them to be non-living as they cannot reproduce on their own. They do not have their own cells. They need living cells to help them reproduce, which is the definition of a parasite. Although some do consider viruses living, such as myself, because they show reproduction, adaptation, and evolution. Viruses have at least two structures. They have to have a genome. The genome is going to be either DNA or RNA, and it's either going to be SS or DS, which stands for single strand or double strand, depending on whether they have one or two strands. A protective protein coat called a capsid, and some may have an envelope, which is former host cell membrane that surrounds the capsid. HPV, here's a close-up view in the upper left, non-envelope, and you can see the various capsid proteins that form together. Uh, bottom left is the flu virus, which is enveloped, and you can see the spikes coming out. Those are HA and uh, N for hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. And then on the left-hand side, you have rabies, which is an envelope virid, and it shows a helical structure. The structure and shape play an important role in how they work, and they can only infect certain specific hosts because they bind to proteins, ligands, that fit to specific receptor molecules on the host cell. For example, HPV binds to skin cells, which cause warts, and flu binds to lung cells. Viruses come in a bunch of different shapes. We'll do the big ones here. They can be a polyhedral shape, meaning they look like the dice if you played Dungeons and Dragons. 20-sided, uh, 12-sided, 8-sided, etc. They can be helical. Uh, rabies virus was our example, and uh, the picture there is uh, tobacco mosaic virus. And they can be enveloped. And that is flu and also HIV is enveloped. Viruses have their own unique classification system called the Baltimore classification system. This is just up here for reference. We do not expect you to memorize that, but Baltimore was named after a scientist who came up with the system, not the city. The most important, well not most important, but the most numerous uh, viruses that are out there are called bacteriophages, which means a bacteria eater, and they look like lunar landers. They tend to do the lytic cycle, and here's the first of the two life cycles. Lytic, the host cell is going to burst, releasing new viruses in the host system, each which then can infect another cell, coming from the term lysis, meaning to burst, which is what the cells do. They go through five steps. They have to attach to the host first. They have to enter the host. They have to replicate their DNA. They have to assemble their various parts, and then they will release themselves. There is a good example of a lytic cycle in the Alien movie. Here is a far less traumatic picture. You can see a bacteriophage landing on a bacteria, injects, makes more of itself, and then explodes out with new ones. The lysogenic cycle, the virus combines into its DNA into the host cell's DNA, and that's formed, or what's formed, a provirus. In this sense, the virus can lay dormant as the host cell reproduces, and every time the host cell reproduces, it makes a copy of its DNA, so it copies the virus. So this is more of a let's wait and see approach. Then there might be some trigger that can activate the provirus, and then it kicks on a lytic cycle. So lysogenic is going to attach, they're going to entry, and then they're going to integrate, It'll be a provirus. They're going to be dormant. They will then replicate with viral DNA, and then if the time is right or they get the proper trigger, they will undergo a lytic cycle. So here's a picture where uh, a bacteriophage injects and becomes part 
of the host cell genome, and then when the host cell divides, they have two copies of the virus. A picture of the comparison of the two, where the lytic is almost immediate, burst out and goes, the lysogenic cycle will take a while. The lytic causes symptoms very quickly. New viruses are made and spread to other cells right away. Examples are flu, measles, and uh, SARS-CoV-2. Lysogenic organism may have no symptoms for many years. They lie dormant. However, once the provirus is triggered, it will enter the lytic cycle. HSV1, which causes cold sores, and VZSV, which is chicken pox, can lay dormant and then causing shingles, typically in older adults. Retroviruses are unique subset of viruses. They undergo a lysogenic cycle and they all contain RNA and they contain a special molecule, an enzyme called RT, which stands for reverse transcriptase. And what they do is they take their viral RNA, make a DNA copy of it, then make an mRNA copy of it, and then make their proteins. Remember transcription translation? They do a step before transcription. They force the host cell to make viral DNA, and that DNA is, added, DNA is added to the host DNA as a provirus. The most infamous retrovirus is HIV. <coughs> HIV is particularly uh, nasty because it infects white blood cells that are supposed to protect you, a subset called the T helper cells. The infection with HIV can lead to AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. Age is when the virus enters the lytic cycle, white blood cells are destroyed, and if you're losing white blood cells, you can't fight other infections, and then typically pneumonia sets in and causes death. HIV was a big deal back in the early 80s, but now we've progressed so much with treatment that people can be HIV positive and lead long, uh, successful, and productive lives. Here's a retrovirus entering into the cell, becomes part of the host, and then whatever the trigger is, then makes new viruses. And that's it for our presentation. We expect you to know viruses, the structure, that they are receptor specific. You should know something about bacteriophages. You should know the difference between lytic and lysogenic life cycles. And you should be able to tell me a little bit about retroviruses, HIV causing AIDS, and they have that unique molecule called reverse transcriptase. I hope you learned something and we will see you next time.